Nature for Hobbes is characterized by a problem of scarcity that cannot be solved. Okay? Gandhi, although most people don't start thinking about Gandhi's economics in this way, Gandhi actually says a number of things about nature. Um, he comes up with uh, what he calls the great law of nature. The great law of nature establishes a premise that is the opposite of Hobbes. So for Hobbes, nature is characterized by scarcity. What Gandhi says, well, no, sorry, mate, it's not like that. Nature isn't exactly characterized by abundance, but nature is actually characterized by sufficiency. The great law of nature is that nature can provide for everybody's survival and preservation needs. Okay? It's the opposite premise from Hobbes. Hobbes denies that that can happen. It's not sufficient, it's scarce, okay? It isn't nature itself that is the source of human violence. It's us, okay? So if nature provides, or nature can provide for all of our survival needs, then if people's needs are not being met, why is that happening? It's because we are taking more from nature than we need for the purposes of our own survival. If we are doing that, we are then setting up this violent competition, the war of all against all, that Hobbes is worried about. So the thing that I find philosophically interesting here within Gandhi is that he is actually beginning here with a materialist premise about nature. But it's a different premise that requires us to immediately begin thinking about um, how we allocate resources, not through competitions over private accumulation, but rather how we think about it morally in terms of our duties to others. So Gandhi gives us a premise in which political economy is fundamentally tied into concepts of moral duty. Hobbes starts out by completely detaching material survival from duty. That I found philosophically quite fascinating. It's not directly an appeal into religion, into religion or a rejection of materialism. It actually begins from a materialist premise, but rather a different premise. And then encourages us to start thinking about wealth, its acquisition, its allocations to others, not in terms of competition, but in terms of moral duty.